Hi, this is Sue Padfield. I'm looking at queries for the advanced DCDL using Access 2007. And for this video on queries, I'm having a look at setting the criteria to change the records that are selected. Okay, the first thing I wanted to have a look at is uh, the different types of text that we can have, sorry, the different types of criteria that we can use in Access. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate here. If I put in criteria of EA for a particular worker, that's a text that I'm putting in, and for a date I'm going to put in 21st of the 7th, 1954, and I'm going to put in a monetary value as well. And the reason I'm putting this in is I'd just like you to see the way that it treats these different fields. So a text field will automatically get double quote marks around it. A date will get hash marks put around it and a number, number won't have anything at all. So uh, don't be surprised if these appear on these types of criteria fields. I know that when I run this I'm going to come out with just one record here. Now an important thing to remember is when you have a number is not to put in anything else like a comma or a pound sign because access won't recognize those as anything to do with currency at all it'll just think that they're text and it'll get very confused and it'll stop your query from working okay now i'd like to have a look in in a, in a little bit more detail about different options we can put in with the text fields so okay so if i wanted to find everyone starting with uh, that have got a worker id of ea i just put in ea and it will only return those workers with that id which i've just got one person for if i wanted everyone that had a worker id starting with the letter e i would use e and then what we call a wild card which is an asterisk and that would mean that however long this worker ID was, if it started with a letter E, it would come back and return it as a record. So we've got two people there. See, again, it's put automatic code in there for us. It says like. Okay, if I would like to change that and say perhaps it's anyone that does not start with the letter E, I would have an E and an asterisk and that would return everyone who doesn't have an E as the first letter. And I can do that for the last letter as well. I'll get rid of that E and put that second. And now that's everyone who hasn't got an E as the second letter. If we've got one, more than one criteria in there, so we could have something like uh, anyone that ends with an E or an A. I could have asterisk E, then the word or, asterisk A, whoops, and then they could return anyone with an E or an A at the end. Now that's all about all the things you're likely to get asked for for the criteria for text fields. To have a look now at numbers. So a number, you can have a greater than sign. Anyone that's got a wage of greater than 20,000, for instance. Oops, another zero. That shows anyone with greater than 20,000. Or the other way around would be less than. If I wanted, there you go. If I wanted anyone that was not 15,000 pounds, I would have both the less than and equal signs together, 15,000. And it would display everyone that isn't 15,000 pounds as a wage. Okay, you can also use exactly the same things on uh, a date field. So if I wanted anyone that was born before 1960, I'd use a less than sign, first of the first, 1960, and it would show me anyone that was born before that date. 
last one I need to show you here now is we've got the between function as well. So I can type in the text between. This also works on the numbers field. Between, so anyone that was born between the 1st of the 1st, 1960, and the 1st of the, whoops, 1st of the 1st, 1970. Make this bigger so you can see the code better. And then run that, and it shows me anyone that was born between those two dates. Okay, that's everything that you should need to know about criteria. Hope that helps.